G'day friends, it's Andrew here again from Nature's Image Photography and in this video I'm looking at high resolution shooting on Panasonic Lumix cameras. For this one I'll mostly be looking at the S1 I have on loan from Panasonic because I've already made a video about high res on the G9 and I can tell you the experience is almost exactly the same. Before we start, if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe and if you find my videos really helpful you can always thank me with a coffee using the link in the details below. So how does high resolution work on a Lumix camera? When you press the button in high res mode the camera takes 8 photos, each with a minute shift of the sensor, and then assembles them all into one very large file. On a 20 megapixel G9 it creates an 80 megapixel photo. On the full frame S1 or S5 the usual 24 megapixels becomes 96, and on the S1R a high resolution photo comes in at a whopping 187 megapixels. Getting started with high resolution is a very simple process. You'll find a heading for high resolution mode right there in the first part of the menu. There are a couple of options you'll want to consider, especially the first time around, so let's go through the setup. The first option lets you choose whether you want to also shoot a regular photo along with your high resolution image. I find this works for me because I know I'll never use every high res photo I ever take. So to save on storage, remembering these are massive files, I can delete some of the high res photos but still hang on to the smaller versions if I don't want to say goodbye to that photo altogether. Next you can choose a shutter delay option. This is important because with the camera merging 8 files into one you want to be sure there's no vibration happening when the shutter fires. Now of course you want to use a tripod but if you're still pressing the shutter button by hand then this delay feature is pretty important too. You can choose a delay of anything from an eighth of a second all the way to 30 seconds which would be handy if you wanted time to jump in front of the camera to appear in your own photo. Personally, if I'm not using the Lumix Sync app, I choose a delay of anywhere from 1 to 4 seconds just to eliminate camera shake. Then finally you choose a motion blur processing option. Remember again that in high resolution mode the camera is merging 8 images into one. If anything is moving while the shots are taken it could potentially appear in 8 different places. So Panasonic gives you a choice about how you want to handle that. With mode 1, whatever movement happens, happens, and that will be reflected in the result. With mode 2, the camera keeps just one image of the moving subject, so it appears the way it would in a normal photo. I didn't have time to make a suitable demo on the S1, so I'm borrowing some samples from my previous project on the Lumix G9, which as I said operates just the same. Now, as I said in my video about the G9, this ability to eliminate motion blur is a bit of a game changer. Without it, you would be limited to only shooting high resolution with totally static subjects. Thanks to mode 2, the range of possibilities becomes much broader. Now when you've chosen all your options, make sure you go back to the top of the high resolution menu page and click start, otherwise none of this is actually going to happen. When you do, you'll now see a new symbol on screen to let you know the camera is ready for high res shooting. And it'll stay that way too for multiple shots. When you're done you don't have to go back into the menu, you can simply press the Q button on the S1 to cancel the high res mode. So that's what happens before you press the button. Now I want to go to the other end of the process and show you what happens after. Now that I've finally had a really good opportunity to put this to the test. And believe me, with the wet season we're having here in Queensland, moments like this have been rare. So as I go through the files in Adobe Bridge, at first glance these two shots look identical. But if you look at the details you see that the high res image is 12,000 by 8,000 pixels and over 173 megabytes. That compares to the regular photo which is 6,000 by 4,000 and a much smaller 41 megabytes. In this clip I have those same two files opened up in Photoshop. Again they look identical at first glance, but the difference is immediately apparent when you blow up each file to 100%. I'm looking at the detail of the tree line at the edge of that closest hillside. First the regular file and I'm going to blow it up to 100% and go looking for a detail that will be easy to compare. Bear in mind this was taken on a 35mm lens and those trees would be over 100 meters away from the camera. Now we're looking at the high resolution file. I blow that one up to 100% and go looking for the same detail. 
Then it's just a simple matter of snapping back and forward between the two versions, and it's very easy to see the extra bang for your buck you get when you shoot in high resolution mode. Now while we take a good long look at my favourite photo from this outing, I'll try to explain why this high res mode would mean so much to me. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to use the S1 and I would love to own one, or perhaps the more lightweight S5. Not to replace my G9, but to run them side by side. I'd still be using the G9 for wildlife and portraits, but when I start travelling again I would love to have a full frame option for those really special landscape opportunities. But even if I could afford it, I wouldn't be looking at the 47 megapixel S1R. I simply don't need that kind of resolution. But every now and then, when those world class photo opportunities come along, I'd love to have access to all that power and more, and high resolution mode gives me that. And if I don't buy a full frame camera before my next tour, let's not forget I can still get 80 megapixels out of my Lumix G9. And that's about it for my quick new look at high resolution mode for Panasonic Lumix. I hope you enjoyed it, and of course don't forget to subscribe before you go. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.